to Yak Anglers Inside and Out. I'm your host, Jamison Redding, and I'm standing here with Chris Funk. You know, we went on a bow fishing trip, and we had a great time. If you missed that trip, be sure to click right here and check it out. But he's going to walk us through some of the gear that we used to shoot those fish. All right, Chris, on the shoot, we used a few different bows. I want you to walk us through a little bit about what, you know, people need to look at if they want to get into bow fishing. I mean, starting out right here, this is a super simple recurve bow. Tell us a little bit about how to rig that for fishing. Well, this recurve's got a, a metal riser on it, so this can actually take the same screw-in reel seats that we use on the modern bows. Uh, if you didn't have this type of riser, you can get a tape-on shoot-through or a reel or a tape-on reel seat that'll uh, allow the adapting, all that stuff we get from the different traditional archery places. Okay, so kind of moving up from the recurve, you have a traditional compound hunting bow here that you have modified to use for bow fishing. That's correct, and that's the way most people start. Most people start with old bows, you know, stuff you're not worried about getting muddy, bloody, dropping in the river for a little while. And this is just a basic 45 pound compound bow. It's a short draw that we, we tend to like a whole lot. I added the, the no gloves so you don't have to worry about your fingers getting hurt when you're shooting it. We added a homemade rest. This is an epoxy rest. Uh, and then it's got a real seat on it. Same, same thing that comes on the fishing rod. Very cool. Regular, this is actually a regular fishing reel, so it's not even a really beefy setup. So not a lot of money a lot of fish, or anything Not a lot like of that. money. You can go to pawn shops, find them all over the place. You know, most people can be on the water for less than 70 bucks. You can't beat that. I mean, you spend more than that on a fishing rod and reel. Exactly. So, and then moving up to a little bit more advanced uh, setup, specifically for bow fishing. Tell us what you have here. This is the Cajun Sucker Punch bow. There's a lot of really good manufacturers that have some awesome bows. Uh, and they're made specifically for bow fishing. So usually they'll have stainless hardware that'll handle a little bit more of the water. Uh, they're a lighter weight. They won't have, you can either have the choice of having let, let off or no let off. Now for no let off, it's gonna shoot more like that recurve, what they call snap shooting, where you'll half draw when you shoot and it's gonna have a constant draw the whole way. So when you get to full draw, you won't have that wall like a normal compound bow does. Now this one, I have the choice of having let off or, or not. And this one, we've actually added the cam, so you have let off. So at that point, it's the hard, then it comes back and it locks back. So that way I can actually track a fish for a long distance if I need to, without having to worry about holding back all the weight. Gotcha. And also something we have to take into consideration is refraction. So you have to pretty much aim low. Tell us about that. You're gonna be, it's just the bending of light. And bending of light doesn't matter whether it's daylight or whether it's flashlight or spotlight or knock lights. It's gonna bend when it hits water. So everything that is where you are looking at, it's not where it's yeah. at. It's actually six inches per foot lower than where you, what you think. And that's the reason I recommend folks going out, shooting when they can see, practice shooting, it's a good thing. Shoot beer cans, shoot, you know, stuff, trash out there. It's a good way to help clean up the river and it's good practice for you. But you can actually physically see where that arrow's hitting in, into what you think it is. Chris, there's one more setup that we used on this trip. Actually, it was uh, Mark and Adam both kind of had this same setup. Tell us a little bit about this right here. That's an AMS bottle style reel. It's real popular with tournament fishermen. There's very little uh, uh, stress on the line as it comes out so you get a true shot with the arrow. For our bows, you know, we tend to, to do stuff that makes this type of reel shoot better. You can shoot a little bit of silicone in here and it'll, it'll allow the line to peel off a little bit better. But I mean, it's an excellent design. It's all in what you prefer. I've always preferred a, a spin in type, or the, the spin cast type reel over that. But I know a lot of guys that shoot that. It's really what you like and what you want to shoot with. So Chris, there's also a few safety things that we should be aware of. Uh, tell them a little bit about what we need to do to be safe while we're out on the water. Well, definitely the, the safety slide that comes on the arrows, you want to have an arrow that's equipped with one of these. This prevents the, the line from actually tangling around the bow line when you shoot and causing the arrow to snap back and hit you. That's what that whole slide is for right there, okay. it's for safety. The other thing that I'd be aware of is if you've got a flopping fish with an arrow in it, be aware of where both ends of that arrow are. I mean, he could, it's a lot of force. A large carp can actually stick an arrow in you if you're not careful. And that's why we carry the bat. You know, this is our stop them from flopping. And you can see it's been used for multiple times to, not, not only is it more humane, you know, to, to stop a fish quickly, but it, it's for safety reasons to keep them from hurting you. There you have it. A couple of really cool setups to get you into bow fishing. If y'all have any questions, feel free to comment. I'll do my best to answer for you. And for more Yak Inglers Inside and Out, click here.